I'm particularly interested in uh, the religious thought of Schleiermacher. I uh, taught, when I was teaching at Yale, I taught seminars on Schleiermacher several times. I find his work fascinating. Uh, and uh, uh, find his, th I actually think his uh, systematic theology, the Christian faith, is intellectually the, the finest piece of Christian theology that's been done since the Middle Ages. Uh, tremendously rigorously and really very clearly uh, written and articulated, although it's, it's hard work reading it too. Uh, but in Schleiermacher, uh, two things uh, from, in relation to what I've been discussing. The uh, one is that the faculty that Schleiermacher selects as the faculty by which he thinks we somehow apprehend God is not reason and it's not uh, volition or an ethical faculty either, as with Kant, it's rather what he calls feeling. Actually, originally he called it intuition and feeling. In the end, he calls it feeling. That's rather misleading, I think. Uh, what he means by gefühl, feeling, uh, quite clearly in uh, his uh, uh, Glaubenslehre, his systematic theology, uh, is uh, immediate self-consciousness, in particular uh, a pre-conceptual, certainly a pre-linguistic consciousness of oneself as existing, but also a consciousness of oneself as immediately dependent. That's the religious consciousness, uh, which I think is a very interesting uh, idea. Uh, it's uh, it's a Kant, an idea that Kant would utterly reject um, it's, although not as radically as, say, David Hume would, because uh, incorporated in it is the, is the thought that we can have uh, an immediate consciousness of a causal relationship, uh, which Kant, Kant will buy also, I think. It's controversial in Kant, but I think what he says about uh, our sensations resulting from being affected by things in themselves is meant quite seriously in Kant. Uh, but uh, so th there is that idea of feeling in that rather technical sense as the faculty by which we have the most adequate knowledge or quasi-cognition as it were of God, more adequate than anything theoretical that the theologian may say. Uh, and what the theologian may say for Schleiermacher is meant to uh, describe and evoke the religious experience so uh, that the theologian is supposed to help the preacher figure out how to do that so that the preacher can help the congregation uh, to uh, not to have but to recognize and clarify and purify the religious experience that the preacher is, should be sure that the congregation does have, because Schleiermacher thinks all human beings have it. Uh, this is an example of uh, what I call romantic religiousness, and uh, I contrast that with uh, rational religiousness in Schleiermacher and to some extent in Kant. And it extends further through the 19th and 20th centuries, and uh, the, uh, we find further variants on it. Uh, Kierkegaard, for example, uh, arguing that what that in us which best captures, as it were, our relationship to God is a passionate striving. Uh, or finally, with the first volume of Karl Barth's Church Dogmatics, uh, the, the idea that uh, the, uh, the truth uh, of uh, any uh, uh, knowledge or statement we may make about God or accept or believe uh, is actually just imputed to us by God. It, it, uh, there, there's nothing, uh, Bart thinks, 
uh, about anything we can say that makes it intrinsically fitted to represent God. And um, the, uh, the other thing I would say about Schleiermacher in this connection is, uh, in addition to seeing feeling as the mode of apprehending God, uh, Schleiermacher wants in theology to interpret everything that can legitimately be said about God as being about the divine causality, about what God causes in the world. He wants to follow exclusively what in the Middle Ages was called the way of causality uh, in the theology and follows it, I think, more rigorously and exclusively than any other theologian I know of except perhaps Moses Maimonides.